All right, so these, uh, this information is going to go into your AP Bio Comp book, the Bound Composition Notebook. All right, first page I have, and this is a right-hand side page, I've divided into three sections. The first section is alternate hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis, you can sometimes see that written as a capital H with a subscript A. This is the hypothesis that states that there is a distinct pattern or trend in the data. AKA means also known as, so alternate hypothesis is also called the experimental hypothesis. An example of an alternate hypothesis showing a distinct pattern or trend. So for chickadees, male birds perform more songs than female birds. So this is showing the trend in the data and this is what you hypothesize about male birds. The null hypothesis is written capital H with a little subscript zero. This hypothesis states that there is no pattern or trend in the data, or it states there's no difference between the groups, or there is no relationship between the variables, or there's no statistically significant difference in the effect of the independent variable. Um, so it kind of depends on what the experiment is about which one of these apply but basically it's saying that there's no difference in your data even though the numbers are different it's not statistically significant so we use this statement a lot that there is no statistically significant difference an example of a null hypothesis there is no statistically significant difference in the number of mates attracted by males who sing and males who do not sing Explanatory hypothesis. It's a it is testable and It is a testable and falsifiable hypothesis that proposes explanations to account for observed patterns or trends. So, for example, male birds sing to attract mates. This is the explanation part. Another example: male birds sing to warn other birds of approaching predators. The explanation part. So remember I said that I'm a visual person, so I like to use highlighters in color to kind of show the difference between um, these different terms. All right, second page. It's also a right-hand side page. I've once again have divided it into three sections. First is level of treatment. Level of treatment, how the treatment independent variable is varied or changed within an experiment. So this is just a slash, how the treatment slash independent variable is varied or changed within an experiment. If these um, abbreviations don't make sense to you, then go ahead and write it out. So um, an independent variable is the one thing you purposely change in an experiment. So if I'm testing to see um, what bees prefer, I'm going to have a solution that has no sugar in it and then a solution that does have sugar in it. So the independent variable is the different types of solutions. Level of treatment is how do I vary that independent variable. So if the independent variable is the type of solution, the type of sugar solution, then I can vary it by having different amounts of sugar. So in this example right here, in an experiment to test sugar preference of bees, there's four levels of treatment. 10% sugar solution, 20% sugar solution, 40% sugar solution, 50% sugar solution. Positive control. Using a treatment to verify a known result, this allows a researcher to show that the experimental setup is capable of producing results. Essentially, a positive control shows what a positive result looks like. So for example, Benedict's indicator will change colors when sugar is present. That's what it does. It, it indicates that there is sugar present. So if I take a solution that I know has sugar in it and I add Benedict's to it, that tells me what is it going to look like when it's working, when I have a positive result. So here's, whoops, sorry about that. So here's my solutions. I have three unknown solutions. Sugar is present, no sugar, no sugar. So Benedict's solution itself is a blue color. It changes color when sugar is present. 
So if I take a sugar solution and a water solution, I know that that's what they are, and I add Benedict's to both, then I know what a positive outlook, a positive result is going to look like. So when I have these unknown solutions, I can compare them and be able to say that, yes, this one um, shows that there's sugar here and these two show that there's not sugar. Negative control is used to verify that a treatment isn't expected to produce a result. It allows a researcher to visualize when there is and when there is not an effect of the treatment. So once again, Benedict's solution indicates when there's sugar. So if I take a test tube that I know has nothing in it but water and I add Benedict's solution to it and see what the color is, then I can compare and see for unknown solutions what it's going to look like. So a negative control tells me what do negative results look like. And since I know what it looks like when I put it in with water and there's no sugar in it, I know it looks like this. I take unknown solutions and I add Benedict's if it looks like this, then I know that that means that these have no sugar in them.